I grew up frequently hearing the same three words from my mom and granny. It's okay, baby. Well, I like to think my mom was innovative. It's okay, baby is a Southern American expression that means I hear you and I'm here for you. Before I became a nurse and took a job in San Diego, I grew up in a holler deep in West Virginia where my chemistry teacher also taught my dad 20 years ago out of the same book. <laughs> The nearest Walmart is 35 minutes away, the nearest watered down Starbucks Espresso is a 90 minute venture, and despite it being 2023, most places still lack basic amenities like cell service or internet. My last name is McCoy of THE Hatfields and McCoy. If you've ever seen the History Channel special, or if you've ever been to the land of our goddess, Dolly Parton, she has an entire career show dedicated to us. Other than that, about all people know, the state of West Virginia is the song Country Roads, the wrong turn movies, or some variation of a joke about dating each other's cousins. The second I say, well, I'm from West Virginia, or I say the word ool, the dirt gets stuck right off my southern roots. People observe it about me, sometimes acknowledge it, but generally speaking, they don't understand it. In West Virginia, we hold on to one beautiful quote like a lifeline by President John F. Kennedy. The sun may not always shine in West Virginia, but the people always do. Growing up in Appalachia, and yes, it is Appalachia. <laughs> Trust me, I'm from there. Thank you. Thank you. People tend to make lots of assumptions. I never quite understood why JFK felt the need to defend a place that, to me, was home. But when I think of West, by God, Virginia, by God. <laughs> I think of cowbells at Friday night football games. I think of coal, which keeps the lights on. I think of pepperoni rolls, which isn't a meat stick, it's a delicacy. <laughs> and I think of my own modern mascot, the man I feel is. An incredibly buff billy goat. <laughs> With an entire fight song dedicated to drinking alcohol. <laughs> For teenagers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We adore him. His song is on all of our shirts. And I, the classy girl I am, even took senior photos of my own pet goat. Yeah. <laughs> His name was also, coincidentally, Billy. <laughs> I left my deep southern holler of West Virginia to go to a more esteemed part of the south, North Carolina, to live with my sweet old southern grandparents. No matter where I moved or how my southern accent evolved, it's okay, baby. I could softly in my head. It felt like a subtle reminder that I was never really alone. The longer I stayed in the Carolinas, I began to adopt a few words quite popular in that part of the South, leaving my already weird accent in with the local dialect. Ma, pa, daddy, cuz, which can only be found in that specific region of the South. My favorite phrase in their specific dialect was setting up. My new friend from school invited me to a setting up, and even though I wasn't quite sure what that was, I was excited to make friends, so I was pretty much willing to do anything. I showed up in casual, everyday clothing to what turned out to be a funeral. <laughs> Actually, a set up is closer to a wake, really, based off the old idea that folks used to sit up all night with the den. I was more nervous than a long trailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> I started to think twice about attending any more things I might have been invited to. In my first nursing class, the teacher was discussing taking someone to the bathroom and ensuring they got on and off the commode with ease. I raised my hand and said, ma'am, what is the commode? The room erupted with laughter, and she said, where are you from? 
I replied, West Virginia. She said, well, I sure hope they have commodes there. <laughs> we do, in fact, have those in West Virginia, despite what my, the general public might think. And after that, she said that line, it's okay, baby. Then she followed it up with, we'll teach you the way we talk. <laughs> I then remember Dr. Lowry standing at the front of the class saying, Now I know we all talk like baby sugar sweetie, but as nurses dressed in all white, y'all can't talk to patients like that. It's unprofessional. <laughs> this from the lady who shoved her entire hand in a condom. <laughs> 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 And said, now tell me if you ever met somebody with a member this large. <laughs> I thought to myself, no, but if I did, I'd sure remember it. <laughs> Telling me that calling someone sweetie was wrong felt strange coming from a place where we all held hands and prayed for each exam. <laughs> At graduation, the professors made sure to tell us, we used to hold this ceremony in a church, but that whole church versus state thing won't let us do that anymore. <laughs> Despite that, the women still wore white nurses' dress, stockings, white shoes, and the same kind of nurse's cap my great-grandmother wore when she was a nurse in the 1940s. <laughs> but calling someone sweetie is absolutely not okay. Before moving to the West Coast, I started my career in large Southern academic medical centers. These hospitals were a melting pot of professionals where most acted like they ain't ever heard of a nurse with a Southern accent a day in their life. I learned that my accent was seen as a giant red flag for, well, I'm dumb, for those who ain't from the South, even if they live there. These people had no idea that I'm a first generation college graduate and that my papa quit school in the fourth grade to mine coal that would keep the lights on for the school he didn't get to attend. They just heard me say y'all and automatically drowned me out with this drown out the sound of my voice with their privilege. Frankly, it left me madder than a white hand. <laughs> <laughs> While working with patients, I felt the social pressure for my coworkers to sound more professional, even though my patients sounded like me. So I made a strong, conscious effort to sound like a nurse. <laughs> Hello, my name is Haley, and I'll be your nurse today. <laughs> I can even sound like a nurse in Spanish. Hola, mi nombre es Haley, yo soy enfermera. <laughs> During Nurses Week last year, when I was living in Seattle, we were asked to bring out our graduation photos. When I showed mine, my coworkers literally thought I was wearing a costume. <laughs> there is no way you actually wore that, they all said, which was then followed by, oh, that's right, you're from the South. That's why you say y'all, and sometimes when you're upset, none of us understand you. <laughs> The longer I've been gone, the more my accent twists and curves like the roads I grew up on. When you hear me coming from a mile away, because you will, <laughs> my voice carries, you probably think my name is Brinley or some other variation of weird ass white people there. <laughs> But when you look at me, a mid-twenties millennial, sassy, former emo kid, with face piercings, black hair, covered in tattoos, you would never look at me and assume that I am a nurse. I was even the topic of a few staff meetings in my first job because some folks thought that colored hair, tattoos, and face piercings didn't make me look approachable. Didn't make me look like what I was, a nurse. I spent lots of time correcting my accent to bypass the comments, questions, or funny looks. I also spent lots of money to make my appearance more normal. Constantly feeling like I was two different people. The professional children's emergency department nurse <laughs> at war with the sassy, alternative-appearing southern gal that I was. But 
It, it was hard to wage that war when the demands of the job keep coming, and as they do in that field, they never stop. I remember one night years ago, before I moved to the West Coast, a baby came in, blue and not breathing. Someone said, Haley, you're in charge of this one. I let my instincts kick in. I spent the next 20 minutes being the nurse in charge of time and interventions. This is what every medical professional in the room trains for, and it's something we all take incredibly seriously. We did everything we possibly could. It wasn't enough. The doctor looked at me, defeated, after the team's best efforts, and said, Haley, it's yours. Call it. Time of death, 246. It was my first time saying those words out loud, not fully understanding the weight that my words would hold. The time I recorded would later be written in black and white on every document to follow, the time that the family would come to later remember and dread. When working in the eighth busiest emergency department in the entire country, there is rarely time to sit and digest any feelings. There's always another task to complete, patient to attend to, or a phone to answer. Time stops for no one in the emergency department. Because I pronounced the time of death, I also went with a team to tell the family. This is the worst part of the job. I think one of the most gripping things about how your body reacts to shock is that you truly forget how to function in the moments following. All of the things your body does naturally feel like they require a substantial amount of effort. Even breathing feels like a ton of bricks are piled onto your chest. A mother's gasp followed by her gut-wrenching wail, sucks the oxygen out of any room. She gripped the tissues I brought her as if they were made of cast iron. Her tears poured onto my shoulder and soaked into my scrub. They seemed to dye them a darker shade. She managed to find her voice through the tears and I could hear her accent. It sounded Southern, like mine. And any doubt I had went away when she did the very southern thing. She started apologizing to me for crying on my shoulder. It felt like time stopped. My heart ached with hers, but there was no section in any of the nursing books that I'd read for what to say when someone's child dies and then apologizes to you. Everything I could have said that felt clinically correct at this moment would have translated so poorly. So as I held on to her, I said the most reliable thing I could think of. It's okay, baby. The room in the air felt thick. My heart felt heavy, and all of the education in the world could not change the terrible, fucking awful moment happening in front of me. Knowing that time truly cannot stop for long, I let go of the idea that trauma should be sterile or clinical. I let go of Haley the nurse and just decided to be Haley the human, caring for someone else the best I could, someone who needed it more than anyone could ever need anything. She apologized to me for her tears again, and I said, it's okay, baby. Thank you.